So now for the rest of the lecture, we're going to be focusing on the idea of innate immunity. But what we're going to first look at when we understand innate immunity is actually invertebrate innate immunity. So this is going to be sort of exemplifying the idea that the immune system, though similar in function in many different organisms, differs in complexity. And that's the variation that we'll see specifically in invertebrates and then later a comparison to our own innate immunity as mammals. So we'll look at invertebrate innate immunity in this flowchart, and this is specifically going to be referring to insects, um, mainly fruit flies and their idea and how they work with their own innate immunity. So innate immunity, again, is the immunity you're born with, something that you have. It's the first line of defense against disease-causing agents known as pathogens. What we understand about innate immunity initially is the fact that it has barrier defenses within it. So these are the defenses that are going to prevent entry, thus the name barrier defenses. Remember, innate immunity either prevents entry or destroys quickly upon entry. So right now we're going to see how invertebrates, specifically insects, are going to prevent entry. First and foremost, if we look at their exoskeleton, it's made of chitin. And that's a material that a lot of microorganisms really don't like. A chitin exoskeleton acts as a quite effective shield. So we'll write that down. It acts as a, an effective shield, and that shield is again, again against foreign invaders like pathogens that cause disease. That's what a chitin exoskeleton will do. It will make sure that the disease-causing agent doesn't enter the internal system. It's a barrier defense, therefore. And as an effective shield, um, it's also important to recognize that it's actually, uh, interestingly enough, chitin as an exoskeleton also lines the invertebrate, a lot of insects and their intestines. So it lines the intestines, interestingly enough, and why would that be necessary? If we understand anything about the di digestion, we know that at the intestines, specifically the small intestine, lots of absorption, lots of chemical digestion. This is where lots of things are going to go into the bloodstream. So why not line the place that does a lot of breakdown and absorption with chitin? Because here, what's going to happen is, if you have it at this area, of the intestines, the ingested pathogen, let's say just in case, maybe accidentally, there was an ingested pathogen, um, it can't get very far because it can only go to the stomach and then after the stomach it can't get to the intestine and if it can't get to the intestine it can't get to the rest of the organism because that's sort of the gateway to the circulatory system because of that overall absorption that happens here. So that's another interesting fact about their chitin exoskeleton. Sort of not necessarily a complete barrier but still a barrier because it prevents complete systemic entry of the pathogen at this intestinal level. So that's our first barrier defense. In addition, insects will also have what is known as lysozyme activity. So we'll state that as another barrier defense, insects utilize lysozymes. And this is something common to many, many organisms that have innate immunity. So what are lysozymes? Lysozymes are specifically molecules that lyse. They're enzymatic, very dangerous molecules to foreign invaders because what they do is they specifically, um, what they're going to do is they break down bacterial cell walls breaks down bacterial cell walls. And I want you to notice something what we, about what we said here. It just says breaks down bacterial cell walls. We did not say what type of bacteria. We did not say that it was a specific, you know, gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria, etc. That means that this is a very general system. The lysozymes as a barrier defense. And lysozymes are going to, when you have this breakdown of the bacterial cell wall, this is basically a theme of much of immunology, to destroy the membrane of any foreign invader. Because if you destroy the membrane, this directly kills the entire invader because it causes what is known as an osmotic lysis of the bacteria or the invader, whatever it may be and whoever it may be. Osmotic lysis of bacteria simply means that the interior of the bacteria sort of just explodes outwards because of these holes that are drilled into the cell walls causing a complete destruction of the organism. So these lysozymes are found on the outside, on the barrier of the insect, and therefore act as a barrier defense, preventing entry. So let's say a bacteria floats onto uh, the outside chitin exoskeleton. First of all, it's going to be difficult to get through chitin and into the insect. In addition, if it's staying on there for a long time, a lysozyme might come by and destroy its bacterial cell wall. So those are two barrier defenses. Key idea here is that they prevent entry. 
Okay, let's say we do have entry. Because again, innate immunity is to either prevent entry or quickly destroy upon entry. How do insects deal with that situation? Let's take a look here. What if we have, or what is the situation when we have internal entry? Therefore, what are the internal immune defenses that act in the innate immunity arm of the immune system? So internal immune defenses. Specifically in insects, what we have are cells known as hemocytes. Hemocytes are going to be specific cells that are within the hemolymph circulatory fluid. Because remember, insects don't have a complete circulatory system in the sense that other vertebrates do. What they have is an open circulatory system for the most part that will contain some sort of hemolymph-like material that's going to be bathing tissues. So cells are within hemolymph circulatory fluid. Okay, so they have this circulatory fluid, and it's called hemolymph. There are these hemocytes within it. They're going to function in immune defense. How so? So let's take a look at the functions of hemocytes internally to promote innate immunity within insects. First and foremost, one of the major things that these hemocytes do is something known as phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is highlighted on figure 43.3. We're going to talk more about phagocytosis when we look at mammal innate immunity, but for right now, this is just a way that a cell will consume a foreign invader, a hemocyte will consume a foreign invader internally and break it down. More on this when we get to it in the mammal side of the story. I think what's of more interest to us when we're looking at invertebrate innate immunity is actually the following. In addition to being phagocytes, hemocytes actually also function in the following manner. They also secrete antimicrobial peptides. So antimicrobial, meaning things that are going to destroy any micro-living things like bacteria, they secrete antimicrobial peptides. Peptides are short, uh, overall short amino acid chains. So we'll write that down, just briefly describing what these are. They're short amino, uh, amino acid peptides. Okay, they're short amino acid peptides. In addition, these are going to be circulating throughout the hemolymph. They're always going to be there. They're going to be scavenging and looking for foreign invaders, and they circulate throughout. And what they do is, just like much of immunity, their job is to disrupt the foreign pathogen's plasma membrane. Because if you can destroy the plasma membrane, you can destroy the organism because everything will just spew out of this pathogen. So those are the antimicrobial peptides secreted by whom? The hemocytes. So in addition to phagocytosis, they do this. The best way to understand this, I think, is to look at some examples of antimicrobial peptides and how an insect would use them to kill an organism based off of its innate immunity. Remember, this is innate immunity. It's nonspecific. So let's take a look. For example, let's say we have an insect. Poor old insect gets a fungal infection. So it has a fungal pathogen. That's a, you know, a type of pathogen that may enter, not a specific fungus, just a fungus, okay? I'm not telling you that it's, uh, you know, a pacetomyces, I'm not telling you that it's, you know, a fruiting body part or spore, it's just a fungal pathogen. It's a general term that I'm using here because it's innate immunity, which is general. So let's say we have a fungal pathogen. How does this innate immunity of an insect work against and defeat a fungal pathogen? Because fungus can work uh, negatively inside an organism. So what happens here is the following. Initially, we have some sort of recognition. The internal innate defenses of an insect, specifically in the situation of fruit fly, there's going to be these recognition proteins that are going to bind to the fungal cell wall. Bind to a fungal cell wall. Now, why the fungal cell wall? Well, that's because the fungal cell wall is a very interesting structure that contains chitin not seen in many other things in, let's say, living organisms. So the recognition here is the fact that a fungus has entered because some sort of chitin cell wall has been observed. And that chitin cell wall will serve as sort of a, a, a red flag for the innate defenses of this insect. And there will be an initial recognition to that fungal cell wall. Now, after that fungal cell wall has been recognized, what's next in the innate immunity? This recognition subactivates right after this a protein within the innate immunity of insects known as the toll T-O-L-L -L, receptor. That's a protein and it's a receptor protein specifically on hemocytes. 
Remember how we said hemocytes are going to function in the innate immunity? They're within the hemolymph. They're circulating throughout this insect's body. They do this. So now the job of the hemocyte essentially is to phagocytose or secrete antimicrobial peptides. That's exactly what's going to happen upon activation. Once the protein, the toll receptor on the hemocytes is activated, Upon the recognition of some sort of foreign invader, in this situation, a fungal cell wall, this is going to result in a signal transduction to the nucleus. Now, we know that a signal transduction just means a message is going to be sent to the nucleus. The nucleus will then have to transcribe and, trans and then the ribosome will translate whatever the nucleus tells it to. The nucleus basically gets a message and that signal transduction occurs. Once that message has been received, what does this... this, this uh, insect actually do, the hemocyte, the nucleus, tells the hemocyte to produce antimicrobial peptides, just like we would expect. So the final step is that this overall produces anti, antimicrobial peptides, just like we expected, and I'm just going to squeeze this in on the bottom, antimicrobial peptides to kill whatever fungi may have entered. Notice the stepwise arrangement of steps that we went through. We recognized, we activated who? The hemocytes, this toll receptor on the hemocytes via a signal transduction sent to the nucleus. The nucleus then said, hey, hemocyte, you need to get into action. You need to produce these antimicrobial peptides that are going to disrupt and kill the fungus that's within us. Notice this stepwise arrangement. Much of the immune system will act in the same way. Recognize, activate, destroy. So that's a fungal pathogen. Believe it or not, this toll receptor was actually discovered uh, in about 1996. And the person who discovered it, Hoffman, he actually won a Nobel Prize for this discovery. It's a big idea of the immunity. And that was in 2011. He won that Nobel Prize. In addition, let's say, let's say we don't have a fungal pathogen, just to sort of summarize and conclude this idea of innate immunity in insects. Let's say there's a bacterial pathogen, okay? Notice again, it's a bacterial pathogen. It is not an E. coli. It's not a pneumonia bacteria. It's not something specific. It's just a general bacteria. How do we defeat this bacteria if you're an insect? Well, you're not going to recognize a fungal cell wall, obviously, because it's not a fungus. It's a bacteria. What happens is, simply speaking, for the purposes of simplicity, I'll just say that a different recognition protein, something that's not going to look at a fungal cell wall, something that understands a bacteria is in the system, a different recognition protein is activated. That recognition protein is activated, and therefore it's going to say, hey, foreign invader, red flag, bacteria is in here. So guess what? This is going to then cause a direct activation of a hemocyte, and the hemocyte produces a different peptide, whichever peptides are good at killing bacteria, because the peptides that kill fungus may be different and are different than the ones that kill bacteria. And that's exactly what happened because a different red flag was raised, produces different peptides effective at killing bacteria. And there we go. That's how we basically saw that's how we basically solve the problem of an internal invasion um, using innate defenses. The key idea here is that it's a very general system. We can distinguish between fungi uh, or fungus versus bacteria, but we can't distinguish between specific fungi or specific bacteria. Only general sets of things like bacteria, like fungi, like viruses, etc. That covers our look at invertebrate innate immunity. Now what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this lecture is the idea of what we do, mammal innate immunity.